Thanks for staying with us. So there are some rare diseases or medical conditions that are killers. According to reports, antimicrobial resistance, AMR, causes an estimated 700,000 deaths annually worldwide. And every country is potentially affected. If not properly addressed, the number could grow to 10 million per year, 2020, 50. 2050. Actually. Now, what exactly is antimicrobial? Joining us on the show is the Chairman of the Nigerian Medical Association Antimicrobial Resistance Committee, Dr. Lawal. Welcome to the show, sir. Good morning. Good to have you, sir. Everybody, it, good morning at yes, all. Yes, sir. You can call us on 90 You can also tweet us at TVC Connect. Please hashtag your VTVC so we can read your tweet. Now, sir, many people know this condition exists. Um, is it a disease? Is it a... Uh, is this some kind of medical condition that nobody knows about, AMR, antimicrobial resistance? Could you tell us exactly what it is? Uh, thank you very much. Good morning, everybody, again. Mm. Let me greet all Nigerians, mm. and I wish us a, a very blissful days, months to come. Yes. And I pray that uh, the second wave of uh, coronavirus, <laughs> we never witness this as a, mm. we're able to dodge the first wave mm. because it's only the will of God that has saved us. Mm. Now, the issue of antimicrobial resistance is not really a condition per se, mm. but a phenomenon that occurs to almost all organisms mm. that we have. fix a vis the antibiotics, antimicrobial agents. I'm try I will try to give some definitions so that you understand mm. what we are discussing in order for people to really follow us. Yes. Now, when we talk about antimicrobial resistance, we are referring to a situation whereby we have an organism and we have an antibiotic or antimicrobial agent that is specifically made in order to kill or inhibit that organism. Okay. Therefore, if a person has an infection of that organism and is initially the prescribed antibiotics, right. it's working, suddenly the antibiotics fail to do the work that the Agent is made specifically mm. for. Mm. That's implied the organism have developed resistance. a kind of resistance right. that's disallowed that drug to work on that organism. Mm -hmm. Are we following now? Yes, very much. Now, you know, unfortunately, these antimicrobial agents, people spend millions of dollars to, to produce. Mm. And I must let us know, even while the process of production, even before the, they come to the market, the resistance is already on grant for mm. this uh, antimicrobial. Mm. Because there's something we call uh, resistors. When we say resistors, resistors imply that naturally is an aggregation of uh, genes that's responsible for resistance. Okay. They are existing in the environment, in the soil, in the water, in everywhere. Mm. Thereby, by the time we are producing a drug already, one or two resistance genes is already waiting for that drugs to make right. it not to be working when mm -hmm. we start using them. But, well, now, sir, we, we, we hear that when somebody uses a drug, for example, is after the continuous use of that drug that causes the resistance, but you're not saying it's genetic. Mm, right? There are two ways where resistance comes in. Okay. There's a intrinsic that's acquired. Okay. When we say intrinsic, intrinsic implies that the organism has those genes responsible for resistance embedded on them. Okay. I've been issue. Okay. That's imply if you use a drug against that kind of organism that has a gene Natural on cell that resists that kind of antibodies, it will not work. Okay. The one we are referring to here, you just mentioned the situation whereby from our own making, yes. our behavior, because in uh, 1945, when people are celebrating the advent of uh, antibodies that, okay, you can kill anti-organisms uh, and so on. This man Fleming, he made a very serious warning that the time we come, that we have all these antibodies available, people can purchase it. If we use like ampicillin, penicillin base, they won't do us any harm. In fact, we use overdose. But the time we come, that people will start using sub doses. Those concentration of drugs, that will not do anything to those organisms. Mm. In doing so, all these organisms, they are like human beings, they have sense, they have ways of mm. studying these uh, mm. antibodies mm. and Adapting. invent mm. a kind of resistance tool in order to make those drugs not to work. Mm. Though then it was a projection. What is happening now? Right. Mm. With us. That's implied when half an organisms 
by our own act. Mm. People will prescribe drugs for somebody used for five days. Maybe four times for in a days. day. It be, okay, doesn't have time in the afternoon, in the evening or something. Uses two times in a day. And after three days, he stopped it. Mm. Those small concessions that is left in the system, those organisms will study this because it's, you won't be able to kill them mm. or stop them from growing. They use the opportunity to study those uh, antimicrobial mm. agents and they invent mm. a kind of genetic mod modification, yes, mm. that make them not to work. Mm. But they think like a human being. Mm. And they try to, because even resistance from uh, all these organisms is like a kind of uh, a, a defense mechanism. Mm. Mm. That's okay, they clean us, they slapping us, you have to get back to you. And mm. once they do it, it's a very serious case. Mm. So what you're saying in essence is, if the if doctor prescribes antibiotics three times a day for five days, take it. The day you stop it before the end of that, that thing that is in your body, it will go and rest. But then it will come back with heavy yeah, really, fortification. Yes, yes, so exactly, that, that antibiotic will not work. Okay. They will have to now look for it's another one for you. Yes, it's not only for that person. Because if, for adventure, that person transmitted the infection, maybe he goes to the hospital, or that's time you know, have patients close to one another, that's a kind of something that's spreading to other patients. Mm. That patient that the organism spread it to is always going to be affected. Mm. Mm. And unfortunately, all this in, in the summary have effects on the cost of mm. health management. Mm. It has a cost, overall cost on the economy. Wow. Even the person that is affected, once you are on the bed, it's prolonged your stay. Mm. You'll be able to go to your daily work. Mm. Economic wise, affect family, psychologically. Mm. Right. It's got to effect. I wanted to understand how the, whether there's a way you can tell. So I have a close friend who's, who's always trying to avoid getting bitten by mosquitoes because when she tries to take treatment for it, they can't find a particular, any treatment for her. If she takes um, any drug, antibiotics or anything, there's this reaction she gets. She's swollen and then she's choking on herself. Mm. So they need to give her another thing to help the reaction she has. Is that, is that antimicrobial reaction or is it silent? reaction in the body that nobody can tell when, until it gets out of her. No, let's quickly sort that one out. It's different from what we are discussing. Okay. It's different from antimicrobial mm -hmm. resistance. It's kind of a reaction to an agent, mm -hmm. which can occur with anybody. People in the past, you know, people do react to chloroquine. Mm -hmm. They do react with uh, the thermala and so on we used to. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not going to be everybody. A specific body will react to an agent. Mm -hmm. Advice is that that person should do away with any agent that your, the person has reacted to before. before, before. And definitely there will be some agent that the person will do well with. There are a lot of uh, anti-malaria, there are a lot of antibiotics. Mm. Mm. It's advisable let the person go to the hospital, explain everything. They find a suitable drug for the person. The person. To so how do we find, drug. how do we tell if a person has, uh, you know, is now resistant to um, antibiotics? Yeah, thank you very much. Unfortunately, all these uh, resistance uh, phenomenon usually occur in the community. You know, these days, People enter into pharmacies, to chemists, to buy antibiotics, oh, and to wish. And uh, in fact, people do all this, uh, like a poor type of a thing. You have fever, you have uh, body pain, they give you analgesics, give you anti-malaria, give you antibiotics. Mm. Unfortunately, an antibiotics maybe just for two days, for three days, and people just use and stop using it again. Now, when a person gets infected with an organism that is resistant to that, in the community, the drug will not work. Mm. Understand? Unfortunately, the problem comes back to the hospital. There's no way that, that patient will reach the hospital because you have maybe attended community health centre, mm. private hospitals. The fever still continue, spike 40 degrees centigrade, 39 degrees centigrade. No way the patient will refer to a very mm. uh, tough centre. Let me go on no. a quick break, sir. I'll, I'll, I'm here to cut you off at this point because I, there's a point I want you to really um, amplify when we come back. Stay with us. Yeah. We'll be right back. Thanks for staying with us. We're still talking about this antimicrobial uh, resistance. Um, mothers, one of, one, of our, one of our greatest worries is the fact that your child is ill. First thing they do, they give you malaria, they give you antibiotics. I mean, I have had a situation where my child was given antibiotics, and even after we completed it, a few days after, his fever also increased again. They now had to give us a stronger one. Now, it's worrisome when you, when you say that. Is it like someone like my child, for example, has his body has, has become has um now resistant to the particular antibiotic, or is there something a parent can do to ensure that this doesn't occur in their children? Yeah, thank you very much. Let me first of all clear some things. If uh, a child 
has fever or stooling, or that does not imply that that patient, that child is having a bacterial infection or something. Many of all these illnesses in children are caused by viruses. And usually viruses disappear on the zoo. Mm -hmm. Even you uh, and it just keep that okay, it's too late, give for readdress, give for RS and so on and so forth. But fortunately, since we are very fast in approaching chemists, pharmacy to buy antibiotics, all sorts, what that's the first thing many parents will do. And in fact, is also a way of increasing resistance because if you use those kind of drugs and the patient is not having that kind of Disease. Or disease, organism. That means the and unfortunately, in our system, there are some natural organisms that are in our system, in our skin, in our gut, in and everywhere. You understand what I'm saying mm. now? We are giving room for all these uh, organisms to, to get rise up and they cook mm. themselves and transform their genetic uh, form to a mutated one that will resist future mm. antibodies mm. when you use them. Now, you first started on a kind of antibiotics. If truly the baby is having an infection, understand? And uh, maybe so. You know, antibiotics are classified. Mm -hmm. There are some first class, second class. There are those ones that we sort to when all things are down. Yeah, Rosafin. Is, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you know, Rosafin these days is not really doing any. In fact, resistance to Rosafin is as high as anything wow. currently. Wow. You know, the meropenem that people thought was doing magic a few years ago today. There are a lot of high rate of uh, resistance to them. Mm. You understand what I'm saying now? And it's our mate because the way we use antibiotics, the way we prescribe them, the way we have access to them, is really increasing uh, resistance uh, strains of, of all these. Uh, Let me pause you for a bit. Someone has been holding for a while. Pharmacist Felix has been there. Good morning, mm. sir. Are you there? Madam Allstate. Hello, sir. Morning, Pharmacist Felix, go ahead, please. Your life. Yeah, Go ahead, please. Morning. I Good morning, want sir. to congratulate uh, Mariah on your clip. I agree for the wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Um, I greet also my other there. Good morning, sir. Thank you. Well done. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. I really enjoy the program, and I'm always there online with you people. Thank I'm you. looking at uh, antimicrobial resistance. Let me approach the topic uh, as a public. Sometimes our discussion there can be academia, can be in the hospital, and some people watching might not actually understand that much. Um, specifically, looking at this from the public perception, we in pharmacy are having some challenges with regards the antimicrobial resistance because, you know, perception of a common Nigerian is cost effectiveness of medication. They always go for the cheap things. Suddenly, you find a relative calling a friend, brother, or whatever who is a doctor, and you know that name doctor in Nigeria, we respect it so much, yes. In a situation whereby a medical doctor, a nurse, or a medical practitioner sends message, text message of prescription to relative brothers and friends because they are suffering from one problem or the other. Mm they end up going to patent medicine or substandard shops where they buy these things and they are fake. Yes. This particular issue is very serious and it contributes to antimicrobial resistance. Hmm. All of the things that our guy is saying there are very valid points. We only encourage the public hmm. to go to pharmacy outlet or go to hospital where tests can be conducted from the lab for the appropriate medication to be prescribed by Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you. So, in response to her... Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Pharmacist Felis. Sincerely, at least you reiterate the point. Unfortunately, all of us has to come together mm. to ensure that we resolve this uh, danger, dangerous uh, situation. Because if it's a global health Price. problem, mm -hmm. not only in Nigeria, everywhere. Mm -hmm. At least, uh, like uh, two, three years ago, 2017, the world met. They discussed antimicrobial. I was somebody was quoting 10 million deaths by mm -hmm. 2050, and in fact, part of the uh, projection was that by 2030, 20 million people should have tilted to very severe poverty mm -hmm. by 2030, and it's very close to us. Mm -hmm. Now, quickly to pharmacist uh, Felix's uh, uh, comment. 
Now, apart from sending messages or something, the issue of prescription of antibiotics shouldn't be done on phones mm -hmm. or by text okay. message. Because if you inform me you have fever, does that imply you have infection? Mm. There are a lot of things that can cause fever. By doing so, we are promoting inappropriate use of antimicrobial agents. Hmm. Definitely, that's what it happened to hmm. us. You, you, you know, because I, I read somewhere many years ago about this person. Every time he had um, intercourse, he wasn't sure of the partner. He would take um, antibiotics. We, uh, let me just kill anything. He now developed a disease that killed him because there was nothing that he could use, that he really could use to treat him. So the, um, whatever the infections he had really? been getting, he, they were just sleeping. And then they now grew to what medicine could not cure, so the, and he died. So to take it from that, sir, how do we solve this problem? What, what, what's the remedy? Once somebody has built that resistance, is there still remedy for the person to live? Well, there can be remedy. There cannot be remedy. Hmm. Let me create this scenario. Somebody has been abusing antibiotics, antimicrobial agents, and he got to a situation whereby he has an infection. Unfortunately, maybe currently in hospital now. After they collect the blood, and in fact, it's possible for somebody to have an organism in or herself that will be resistant to all available antibiotics, antibiotics group of antibiotics in, uh, that is available mm. at that moment, which is pan resistance. Mm. What should we do? Maybe in a very serious setting, maybe they look for new drugs that are under production and so on, which we may not have the opportunity in Nigeria. Right. How many, how many drugs are we producing in Nigeria? How many, what kind of level of research are we doing in order to bring in more? Those are the things we mm. at least we need to mention as a way of mm. prefer solution to yes. all this problem. Therefore, the patient, if so lucky, maybe by doing the investigation or something, may have a drug that will be useful. Once we have it, the mm. patient will take it. But um, the patient is unfortunate, mm. and there's no drugs that matches or that is susceptible to that kind of mm. organisms. We have to go. Oh. Yeah. You have to go there. Eh? Well, oh. I have Part of, uh, part of, part of uh, what is, is okay. that, apart yeah, from, to visit you. apart from <laughs> patients, maybe prolonged stay, mm. costs, and so on and so, there are a lot of adverse effects that patients can exist. Yeah. And the, the, answer, the last of it is There's that patients question. might There's a tweet for you. Yeah. 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 Like it. Like it. Uh, good morning, Moriah and others. Please, can the doctor make more clarification on if you are placed on drugs and, and the dose is three times a day? If for any reason you miss the afternoon dose, what should the person do in the evening? So how do you continue? Not that you intentionally skip your dose, but then you... you Not that you intentionally skip. Yeah, the patient was second. prescribed three times, three times a day. Three times a day. Times but you took two times a day. For God's afternoon okay. dose. No, what I'm saying is that you shouldn't forget. You shouldn't forget taking and drugs. Okay, yeah, after that day that you forgot, something you happened. happened. Yeah, we continue taking this drug and... Uh, if you go back to it. Yes. Go back to this drug, continue. But you, seriously. If somebody is sick and drug prescribed, before you can prescribe antibiotics for somebody, you should be very sure that that patient has infection. And infection shouldn't be taken uh, lightly. Because anything mm -hmm. can happen to you, it can progress. Well, let, me, let me make a confession, sir. Yes. Let, me, let me give you one confession. Me, because I, I just have, I have this thing against antibiotics. When, when the doctors prescribe for my children, at the time, I don't even give them at all. I just let it, I just like it's natural course. So I manage the temperature, I give them paracetamol and just manage them. But I never have like boxes and boxes of paracetamol that I don't use it. I just I, I because I feel that it, it, make, it makes them weaker if I if I if I if you I give do them that. antibiotics. Or do you think is that, is that the wrong perception or do you, do you think I'll, I should at least give them antibiotics? No, I said something the other time. Maybe most of all these febrile illnesses in children might not be due to bacterial infection. Mm. Maybe you are so lucky there are viral infections and it goes on to their own. But if it's bacteria. It is bacteria, and specifically, the doctor is sure. Maybe through tests or maybe from his uh, history mm. and everything. And you fail to take care of antibiotics appropriately because it's part of inappropriate usage of antibiotics. Mm. That implies you've instituted a very low dose or an incomplete dosage. Mm. You are already promoting the emergence of uh, antibiotics uh, antimicrobial resistance. But what if and you didn't start it at all? And and maybe it didn't start at all. You did not start it at, at all. all. Well, no. That's implying maybe your, was just viral. your child also with viral infection that is mm. uh, that, that is another yeah. thing I wanted to And let me also have this before that. You know, normally even our system, they have what we call immune uh, defense mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. Even the patients, some people have a bacteria, the body system on its own can't find a way of eradicating. You know that mm. you understand so that, that, yeah. not viral. I want to, because uh, 
Corona virus is a COVID-19 yeah. is a virus, yeah. is a viral yeah. infection. Yeah. But I heard that in the um, hospitals, they are giving people antibiotics. But I thought antibiotics were for bacterial infections. Yeah, yeah. So why are they giving them antibiotics for a viral infection? OK, good. The basic thing there is that, you know, when somebody has a viral infection, there's possibility of uh, the range immune system and so on and so forth. Antibiotics just given like a prophylaxis. There's possibility of superimposed bacterial infection. And you know, COVID itself is a very serious uh, mm. respiratory problem that you shouldn't, you shouldn't mm. joke upon. But in terms of COVID also, currently there's no specific drug that we say that is for COVID. Mm -hmm. At least with experience with what people have uh, experimented, they just mm. believe that, okay, when you combine this and this plus this plus this patient, do better yes, on them, and we are just we juggling to everything together to ensure that we have a, a safe return of our patients mm. from a COVID. Uh, Unfortunately, we have to run. Here. Thank you yes. so much, sir. It's always Thank a pleasure having our doctors explaining to us. Thank you. So, yeah. at least we know that we should do everything to ensure that we don't. Um, when the, when you're prescribed antibiotics, finish your, finish your dose, even though you are well, finish it to the end because you don't want the uh, in your body. Set to alarm. Me when I the, the, that time I was in hospital, I set alarm. Twelve every twelve hours. Uh, Mom, no, you were hospitalized. It's now when we. No, talking. but when I came out, I was still taking antibiotics. No, now usually they keep you. My, there's now I'm understanding. You know, I, I understand to, better what my. I have, to, uh, they, have a fabulous we'll day, everyone. Thank you very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.